of all, thank you all so much for coming and all of the interaction that's been gaining on the Flow Party On Demand. Um, we was obviously super excited to put the video out and uh, I think everything that we've tried to achieve with this is to be unique, different and really create something that I don't think it's actually been done. Um, so I'm going to kind of give you a bit of an insight to what the idea is behind Flow Party On Demand and us for creatives, developers and amazing people. Um, so to start off with the course and the way that the course is, which is really unique to any other course that you've maybe taken or seen, is that this is effectively a relay race of us four people put together. So instead of a traditional format of, you know, uh, doing a course with one person, you actually get the full package of us individually as we collaborate together on a project that you will work alongside with us um, and obviously create and produce at the end. Now, each individual tutor will play a key role in a certain aspect of the project. So you're going to see lots of different things of how we'd interact and communicate between the relative um, fields. Um, we're also going to get into how we like manage the project, how we actually deal with feedback, how we present feedback. Um, and how we bring it all together in a really cohesive and seamless way. So I would be effectively starting uh, the project where I'll do some housekeeping and I will explore the experience design. So this will be focusing on the design, how I go through all the different processes inside of the design, UX, UI phase, whatever you want to call it. And then I will transition over to Diego. And Diego, I'll pass over to you, and Diego can explain what he will be doing. Well, cool stuff, obviously. <laughs> well, um, my my part of this uh, relay race is about 3D, 3D, and especially spline. Uh, well, I think everyone knows, everyone that knows me knows that I'm really passionate about 3D. I love playing with 3D, like not only for the web, but for things in general, and we going to add a little bit of spice of 3D on the project, the final project we're going to build. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you guys understand how 3D in general works first, then how it works on the web. Then I'll explain how Spline works, why we chose Spline over other solutions for the project. And then we'll go through the whole process of modeling, uh, creating materials, lighting, setting up the scene and preparing an amazing piece of 3D uh, product to be included on the final project. So it will be extremely fun. Then after me, next guy is Joe Moore. Joe Moore. And Joe Moore will then will pick in up the creative development side of the project. And Joe Moore, you can uh, give a little insight to what you'll be doing. Can I actually speak? Is it is it okay or? Yeah, that's that. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, well, uh, yeah, this project is approached from the perspective of an actual project, so we're gonna do it like it. We were, we would do it with a, an actual client. So we're gonna. I'm gonna touch on how I build a site for the specific needs of a client, and uh, yeah, I'm also gonna give my input on how um, I take feedback from the client and present. Oh, that project as well and we're going to touch on all the new fun things that webflow release including spline and variables and how all of this ties into webflow interactions because obviously let's face it um, we're all big fan of webflow interactions uh and yeah that's it so i'll be handling the dev portion everything that's webflow specific for this project uh we're going to touch on how i i do my qa how i do my testing and uh yeah I hope this is a very interesting project for you all because, I mean, we're, we're all putting in our little special yeah. taste and perspective on it. So it's going to be cool. Yeah. I think I think what's going to be really amazing and hopefully as we start to, you know, bring this to life is that you're going to kind of see how we interact with each other and how we've set things up for each other, which is really important whether you're working by yourself or working with other creatives. Um, so it's really going to enable you to be very multifaceted in that area to to understand how you might manage these things 
Um, and as we go along, as and then obviously Jonathan does his part, there will be a lot of heavy interactions behind the scene between Jonathan and Elia. And the same with me and Diego, because I'm kind of setting Diego up. I'm going to give him art direction. Then obviously Diego uh, is going to transition from Jonathan. Jonathan's going to obviously take my designs and start to build that out. And then the last part, which is the bit that really elevates this, is passing over to someone like Elia, which is going to be doing the technical development. And this is where we're going to get into the nitty gritties. And Elia, you can obviously um, give a little bit more context on that as well. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> so in general, I think we've labeled it as technical development, um, maybe because of lack of a different term, because mainly we'll be covering custom code and doing stuff that wouldn't be possible natively in Webflow or if it is easier done outside of Webflow or it's more performant or just best practices. Um, obviously, GSAP is a hot thing in the Webflow community. Everyone seems to be wanting to learn it, um, but there is more to, to custom coding than GSAP. Obviously, we'll cover GSAP animations, but um, I'll talk about you know creating custom sliders and the thought that goes behind it and choosing the right tools for well, the right problem that we're trying to tackle. Um, I'll be covering best practices, in my opinion, or some industry standards when working with custom code in general, how to um, like structure your code, how to divide things into reusable parts so you don't have to, well, do the same thing multiple times if it can be done easier. How I handle custom code after we're done in terms of hosting. Um, for example, I wouldn't leave it in code sandbox if we're using that. Um, since there is faster and better hosting options available um, and stuff like that. So basically a lot of coding. <laughs> a lot of technical stuff, as we called it. So, yes. um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be covering, obviously, a lot, and you're going to get a really great perspective from each of us to see how that comes to life and how we get into the, to the, the, to the format a little bit more so you can understand how this would be. In short terms, and Melissa can add later on to talk about like some of the more details, is obviously we have two portions to this. One would be a video recorded portion of the live sessions. And then obviously there's a part where you can actually physically take part of the live sessions with us. It would be a more handheld experience where you get to interact and you really kind of get to a little bit more involved with how we do things and ask questions and get some feedback and really help you um, and guide you um, on that second opinion and that second thought inside of yourself. Um, so hopefully that will really start to give you the confidence of making better decisions and understanding how to make them decisions and what points that you need to make certain decisions and how you manage things as bestly as possible. Um, the, um, the way that it will work, I'll just finish off one last bit and then I kind of sealed everything that I think is covered as I was obviously into the setup so theoretically each of us will all be doing a month so you if you're doing the live classes you will be with each of us for a month that will be two live sessions each week probably on a, we put a Tuesday and a Thursday so there'll be around an hour maybe an hour and a half depending how you know how much um, kind of Q&A questions and little things at the end come from the demonstrations that we're going to walk through and obviously a some of this is going to be pre-planned and organized where we can show, but the time in between is hopefully going to allow you to actually start action in this stuff um, so that you guys can really work alongside us, almost like shadowing us in some ways. Um, so, yeah, we'll do two, le two live lessons per week for obviously the four weeks for each of us. So you've got eight lessons, eight one hour or so lessons per tutor. I think that what was the total amount of hours that is across the board? I think it was 32, 32 hours across the board with us. Um, and in between, in between our little handover, so I'm passing my baton over to Diego, we're going to just do a little one week break uh, just to, again, to give you a bit more time to digest all of the stuff that you went through in that first month start to action, make sure you're getting yourself up to speed or at a point where you're comfortable to carry on. And it also gives you time to just re reset for the next part. 
and then obviously you will kick off into that next month and so on and so forth um i think that's pretty much it yep um okay so like the main thing about this whole uh relay race and why we did it like that is because there are a lot of courses out there that are uh sort of like fragmented you only have one topic and you learn about that topic and that's it or maybe you learn the full scope of let's say webflow uh but that is it it doesn't really give you the experience of working and collaborating with other people and for us that has really been been the way we have been able to grow our business from Ilya collaborating with Joe with Joe with Joe Moore uh Diego you know what i mean so we want to make sure that you guys have the tools at the end of this to be able to collaborate with other people how does hand up work what are the deadlines how to meet those timelines how do you present to clients like those are things that are you know, uh, one of the most important factors in closing businesses. So that is why we did it that way. And that li little week in between is just like just Joe said, so you can get a little breather uh, in between because it is a very intensive cohort. It is something that, in my opinion, it's really going to transform you guys. Um, okay, so now jumping into uh, pricing. So if you guys have questions, uh, maybe we should open the floor a little bit or should we open it at the end? Yeah, I mean, I'm easy to open up the floor a little bit, see if there's any immediate questions or any faults or, yeah, anything really. Just, yeah. Okay, yeah. so the first question we have on the chat is, will we also have the design files, for example? Joe, you can take it? Yes, yes. What we're going to do is obviously we're gonna, this is all going to be pre made pre-organized pre-structured pre-laid out everything's going to be done how we would do it how we would set things up how we'd lay things out and you will have all of the materials so that you can do whatever you want with them like for instance just to give you a, a, again a little bit of an insight to what we're going to potentially be doing and this is something that i actually forgot um we did uh, a poll and the, on a various different number of sites that people would have liked to seen and the main one that came up was product focus um, and obviously that's allowed us to really use each four individual skills really well um, and that's what enabled us to to bring in something like freed and spline as well so that's really helped us so we will be doing a product focus website we have got some initial concepts that we've started to design um, and it will be based on a really cool speaker um so you'll be creating a fully fledged um highly interactive landing page with um some sort of e-commerce um aesthetics to it as well um so that's a little insight obviously there's not too much more to show on that at the moment but um yeah <laughs> okay any thoughts of prerequisites would you recommend a certain level of design tools and webflow Okay, so do you want to answer, Joe? Yeah, I mean, well, is this the, the the kind of level that we'd expect someone to be at to come into this type of course? Is that the correct correct assumption? Um, yeah, I, I had this question actually on um, Twitter. Um, I think I think a, a medium to high level is is probably going to be the sweetest spot for this type of course. Um, not saying that the lower levels couldn't take the course. I just think there is going to definitely be parts in here which are going to be challenging. For instance, even for myself, if I'm doing 3D and I've never used Spline and I've not used Spline, I know that's going to be uh, a little bit of a challenge, but also it's going to be a rewarding challenge to take part of. And it's also an additional great skill to dive into. And I think... With something like Spline, Diego is going to run you through a lot of the fundamentals that are going to really help you get on that journey. And I think that's one of the things as well with something like Spline. It's, there's lots of information out there, and I think we can all agree, like some of it is is hard to follow or it's not the right thing that you're looking for. So, again, that's going to hopefully cater for that. Then on some of the other aspects with Elia, um, 
yeah, technical development. We're going to get into like GSAT and stuff like that. So again, there's going to be a, a level of input that's needed. I think the other thing on the flip side to that is if that you're not so confident in one of the areas between us, there is definitely going to be something regardless of that level. For instance, surely everyone can do the design portion with me. Surely uh, everyone can do um, parts of um, jo uh, Jonathan's Joe Moore building web flow. So that also op offers up some flexibility there. But I would, to finish up and just to repeat, I would probably say to a me medium to a pro level would, would be a, a good sweet spot for this. I think it's good to add, though, that all the classes will be um, recorded. So if mm -hmm. that one hour was too quick for you to follow along and it might have been a bit above your level, there will always be the ability to like look back 20 times if you'd like um, to go slow or like have the recording here, Google your own resources next to it. Um, for example, coding questions, if we're talking about my part specifically, we always have chat GPT <laughs> to ask questions if you want, if you'll be doing coding in your own time and you want to find out different things and you don't know the right search terms to find it on Google yourself. Um, which I'm going to talk about as well, because I also don't know everything about coding, obviously. So ChatGPT is a tool I daily use. Um, and how to use it properly is a thing I'd like to cover in the course as well, like properly, um, at least how I like to use it. So it is a real um, helpful tool. And same goes for 3D. Like I have barely played with it. Um, so if I would struggle to keep up with Diego, um, I would just advise to, in between lessons, spend some extra time if I'm interested, watching some extra tutorials and, you know, put in put in your own time. Great. Yeah. If I can, sorry, Melissa. What I wanted to say earlier uh, on the, um, shit, oh yeah, the, the, the product, the subject of the website we're doing, which is product design. Um, even though that's what we're doing, we're going to show principles that are, like, we want to give you like knowledge so that you can use it no matter what project you're working on. So even if it's not super relying heavily on 3D or like custom code, whatever, we want you to be like gaining knowledge that you'll be able to utilize no matter what project you're working on. So yeah, that's it. Sorry. There's yeah, there's a lot, a few more questions firing in Melissa. Yep. Uh, okay, so Ethan actually asks a question similar to what Joe just sort of answered, and he wants to know if they, if you guys have the liberty to bring your own idea and topic to the table and then follow as you go. So yeah. <laughs> I feel like you could, if you feel confident enough to be able to take the ideas that you're learning in the cohort and apply them to your design. Because there will be specific widgets, components, animations that are built for that specific component. So I feel like if you're advanced in a way that you already know sort of like the, um, how would you say that? Like the, the structure of it, uh, then I would recommend it. But if not, if you're just starting and you're wanting to learn, I would suggest you follow along. I'd say bonus points for anyone that actually wants to try and do that, because I think that would be a real, a real good challenge. Um, but again, you would have that really strong reference point to follow along with. So I think also that gives you a good bridge to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, like I, I would recommend that. You know, obviously we're, we're going to have a design. We're going to have the art direction set for this. If you want to, you know, bring your own flavor to it, change things, evolve it, just so you feel like you're maybe doing a little bit more. So you're not literally just coloring in by numbers. And if you want to color in by numbers, that's totally fine as well. And I think, again, you've got that flexibility, how you feel, whether you feel confident in that. There could be areas that you could take more yourself. There could be other areas where you actually just follow along. Um, but as Melissa said, there's definitely going to be areas that are going to be tied to certain parts of the design um, and ideas are going to be based from that. So, yeah. Okay. Um, um, okay. The next question is, I learned Webflow. Oh, look, I learned Webflow from scratch by doing Joseph's award course. What a ride. <laughs> I, actually, 
a lot of the things that I learned in development when I took Joe's course and Joe Moore's, um, w like, were because of them. Like, I didn't really know a lot of things, and they showed me a whole new world that I didn't know because I started as a designer, so... Um, how are you showing constraint challenges to simulate a real world client project? So we actually talked a lot about this with Joe Moore specifically. Um, in the beginning, we wanted to sort of have like a, you guys were the client and Joe was the, the developer. Uh, but I think like that would be a little bit too crazy. So we will have sort of like curveballs happening here and there. Um, maybe like, make the logo bigger or like <laughs> like smaller stuff that it's more manageable, but how we would, uh, or how would they approach those type of problems? I don't know if you guys want to add anything to that. Yeah, no, I, I think that's pretty much it. We'll, we'll try and add things in there that will add some realistic um, kind of simulation of that. Um, also, we'll try and keep it as organic as we can. Maybe we'll make our own mistakes or we'll do things that we can show you how we might solve certain problems. So that may come to fruition as well. Um, and I think, uh, again, some of the other things, I mean, just to recap, like on me, like how I actually present work and show work is also going to be really translatable in that, in that way. I mean, when, when you can, do them things really well, I feel like you will resolve a lot of the teething issues that you have with clients. And that's probably just because you're not, you're not being clear on what the steps are, how many rounds of reviews you've got, all of these little details, and then making sure that you're presenting things clear, making sure that you're pushing the client where you want them to go, but actually having some some weight behind what you're saying rather than say, I did this because it was nice or, you know, you've got to try and test story to feed into that. And all of these little things will help in that realm. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer of, of nurturing the client early on baby steps. I don't, don't run before you can walk, like but get the baby steps in so that you can really get them on board, sell the ideas and don't try and run too far forward. And, and then once you've got them, then that's when you can kind of put your foot down a little bit more and, and move through the process quicker. But I, I, I'm a believer of them. Baby steps at the beginning will save you so much head, headache down the line. Next one. In terms of handoff and multiple people handling the project, I said it's an, an important part of the course. Curious to know if you have a naming convention or framework, framework def, defined for it and what is it? Be one of the challenges. Um, sorry. Hello. Hello. Okay. Can you hear? Me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. One of. Uh, I'm gonna base the the, the 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 naming convention convention for the structure of the site. I'm gonna base it on what I use. So I'm not gonna use Clippers or Reloom uh, library or anything like that. So I'm going to show you how I do it, which includes a uh, style guide that we're going to base everything off of. Uh, my approach is essentially backwards. So I like to design, uh, to design to work on the design itself first, and then spend time on the resource, uh, well, on the style guide for my clients moving forward. But I, I prefer to put my efforts on the actual design first. So I'll show you how I do that. But even though, let's say you're using uh, client first, you'll you won't be lost with what I'm using. I might name things differently, but essentially, it's pretty much this. It's, it's very similar, to be honest. Yeah. I think um, actually we I think we all know we all know client first, but I don't think any of us like specifically follows client first because sometimes it's too restrictive. So I think what you're going to see here is sort of like a, our own version of client first. Yeah, exactly. We, uh, as Jomo, also... just to re reiterate. Oh, sorry, Ilya, go on. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to add that with all these frameworks, I get that 
they offer like um, a hand to, to have some sort of idea how to build websites. But I think a really important part of becoming a creative developer is to learn how to comfortably build websites a way that you like. And if it's called padding global or padding or whatever the class name specifically is, shouldn't really matter as long as the website is built properly. Mm. And if it's not called div block 17, but as long as it's got a clear to understand name and the structure is well thought out and you know the principles and the thought that goes into, um, well, the box model, for example, you will be able to build sites with whatever class names you want. Um, for example, Miko says mast is nice. Well, use mast and apply the principles and the thoughts that will teach you and that will guide you through to use your preferred framework to get to the end result. Mm. Um, and in terms of my, from my technical standpoint, like how I will add on top of it, like the specific class names that we'll be targeting in the custom code, you can change them in the code. Like it's not like the G sub animations are only going to work if they target one specific class, you, you can change what it targets. Um, so I wouldn't be too bound by whether we specifically name things all exactly the same. There's, there's, there's something in, in that as well. I mean, for us that have looked at stuff like, you know, client first, mast, all of these other kind of coding structures, you know, the key thing for us is that they're over bloated and there's a lot going on and there's a lot of unnecessary things that we, we need to use. And when we build, we're building with system in mind and also class system in mind. And we've got a very repetitive pattern that we would use but we're breaking down each of the tasks task by task rather than saying one size fits all we can actually create something that's more bespoke and custom to that actual current build rather than using a bloated system where you start applying too many things unnecessary things that you don't actually need um and again once you build up a fam familiarity with that you can it, it becomes quicker it becomes easier to to actually action that um, so yeah, there's just some an, a, initial extra kind of thoughts on, on the system and, and how we'll be creating it. But ultimately what we're doing is all based on exactly the same lines and principles as what all of these other libraries really do. Yeah. And, and rest assured, it's not like going to be like the blog 1942, like it's still going to have a very structured framework, but no, it's it going to be based on common too. sense. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, okay, guys, uh, let's just do maybe a couple more and then we'll keep going because uh, th there's a lot of questions. So, but one that I think it's important is Baltasar's question for the basic video on demand tier. Will we get the rec the recording of the live classes and on top of that recorded recorded videos? No, you will get the actual recording of the class unedited with the feedback part cut off. The reason is because we want you to watch exactly what happened in the class and not something recorded that you're going to have to like, you know, maybe you're going to miss important things that happen in between. So you will get the actual video re recording of the live class the day after. So we will have 24 hours until the, the video of the previous day is uploaded into your account. Uh, I know for sure that I can't attend live. Should I take the video on demand access? So for you to be able to get the, the signed certificate, you will have to show proof that you worked on the, on the like you actually watch the classes, at least 80% of the classes. That will mean you showing your work done. If not, you can still take the, you can stay, still take the, the, the all access, but you won't get a certification. And that's because we want to make sure that whoever graduates with a certificate, it's actually real. Um, okay, so let's just hold on the on the questions a little bit and let's just talk about pricing uh, because maybe people have, you know, doubts about that. So right now we are going to start early bird, which starts on Monday. We have two tiers for flow party on demand. Tier one is video on demand access, which on Monday starts at 
for the four months included. Four months. So that's all the plan included in there. You can watch the video recordings of the live class again, uploaded the next day. And then we have full on demand access, which early bird is I, I, 999. I think it's a steal. And then after that, so uh, we are going to run early bird for a week. And after that, we go up a little bit more to uh, 1350. And then a week after that, it becomes whole price at 1500 uh, or 1499. And video on demand basic goes up to 260. So uh, both. Just, can, I, can I just jump in and add one little thing here just to add a bit more context on the, the costing? Because I think this is, this is really important. And obviously, you know, while it may seem you know, uh, it's, it's an expensive product. And if we was going to do a comparison and we look at something like the AAW Awards, which is effectively a similar kind of format, but you get one person and you only get 10 hours. You're getting 32 hours for four people, um, which is like a, a massive increase of knowledge, talent, experience, um, and 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 it's effectively a, a similar cost to um, the AAW awards, so that's why we kind of gauge that that price. Um, and effectively, you know, we haven't even gone above what AAW awards is charging. You get triple the amount of hours. You get another three tutors um, on this whole experience. Um, so yeah, we felt that that you know justified. Um, what we've got going on um and and also it's a limited space um opportunity as well so we're not opening it up to you know loads and loads of people so it's going to be a, you know really catered kind of experience for you all i think a question that has been asked in the Sorry. chat um by paul um what exactly does full access to tutors mean um that ties into the pricing as well because melissa if you could expand on that in the basic plan, because you're only watching the videos, uh, you will be able to follow along, you know, through video, but you won't be able to have access to this for tutors. Now, the full access, the all access one gives you access to all of the tutors during the live class. So after each class, you will have a few minutes to ask questions, show your work, you know, get a little bit of feedback from whatever you're doing. And then on top of that, you will also have a private Slack channel uh, where you can ask any questions to the tutors as well. So like Joseph said, it'll be sort of like a handheld uh, situation for the all access ones. Um, just because we have seen that during courses, people do have a lot of questions and it's important to be able to ask them and action them on the spot. So that's a little bit of information on that. Not sure if it was clear. Yes, it's in dollars, guys. Um, okay, what else do you think we should cover on the pricing? Is there any, are there any other questions on that? No, I think we're good. Simon, I like that comment. It's not really that expensive for what it is. Yeah, I appreciate that. It was obviously a very tricky thing for us to like, you know, nail down. Nail down on like what we're what we're gonna charge for this. But uh, as you say, there, there is a there is a lot of value. It is a super unique experience. It is going to be spoke to a set number of people that decide to come along. Obviously, this is um, you know a, 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 an early Easter egg for us to start and see how this uh, progresses. But, you know, if if more if if this all goes as well as we expect it to go, then you know this won't be the first set of seats that we would be open. Obviously, we'll need a bit of breathing time, um, but we've got plans to bring in other top creatives and create other scenarios. So um, there's going to be plenty of other things um, available for you at some point. First one is obviously making sure that we get this one as successful as possible, which I'm sure it will be. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there's actually an interesting question from Richard regarding time zone perspectives. Mm. We talked about this uh, also, and I think keeping everything consolidated in the morning is uh, 
the best way for guys that are in Europe. Um, right now, we, we can't have like a, like a sort of Eastern and Western time zone option. Uh, maybe I, we will try to have that in the future. But, you know, unfortunately, if you're on the other complete side of the world, um, it would have to be watched, recorded if you don't want to wake up at four in the morning. <laughs> But, you know, something that we can also, always work on in the future. Um, okay, guys. So let's see what other questions we have here. And if you guys want to unmute yourselves and ask your questions, that's also fine. Uh, Isaac, there is a curriculum available to preview on the on-demand uh, website. I'm going to drop it in your comments. It is, um, it is just placeholder at, at the moment. Things will probably evolve um, as we work through these different scenarios, but there's a good base and structure for you to get a good insight to all of the different things that you would be learning. Um, yep. uh, John, another question. Uh, will we have lifetime access to the recordings and materials? Yes. Once you pay, that is saved in your account. So when you when you guys pay, you're going to be jo like you're going to join basically the flow party school and that's where all of your courses will live. So the first cohort will live there. And if everything goes well on that platform, we'll continue adding the courses there. If not, you'll get the material, but you'll own it. It's yours. Um, will we get feedback throughout the on demand classes? Yes, you will get feedback. Uh, I think I I'm, I went through all the questions. Are um, the scholarships? Are the scholarships for yeah. the, yes, for they yeah. are for the full access, guys. So there's actually a scholarship uh, going around right now that we're giving away two seats for the all access, and we'll be announcing the winner on the 22nd on social media on Discord. So just. Maria the first. Yeah, that, that that's that's a great idea. And we will have something. Uh, we'll create a another channel for the other students so that they can obviously communicate with each other and share their learnings and um, help each other out. Uh huh. Uh, where's the preview video you shared with the the promo video, the teaser? OK, um, cool. So. I think that covers all the written questions. Do you guys want to ask anything else? Uh, unmuting yourselves, or is that all? Okay. Actually, I had a quick question. Um, yeah, go ahead. Say. So um, you were saying that, that was you were Elia, planning huh? for like <laughs> Tuesday, Thursday for like two sessions for about like an hour, hour and a half kind of thing. And then for people who get the basic tier, it's 24 hours after the Tuesday, so like Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, that yeah, that's that's a good assumption. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yep. How will you choose who gets the scholarship? So it's gonna be uh, we're gonna use a tool, randomizer tool that's just gonna pick one person at a time, and that's how we're gonna come up with the three by picking the uh, the people that actually followed all the steps. Sweet. Oh, Arena, I know you. I think if it's from Instagram. Um, yeah, I think that's it guys. So yeah, just to wrap everything up, we are opening early bird on Monday for, for the all access. We only have 30 seats. The reason for that is because we want to make sure that each one of you guys that sign up, get the, uh, the real good, you know, feedback and treatment from all the teachers. And that's as much as they can be stretched. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you get take advantage of the early bird pricing because after that, it's just going to go up uh, for both prices. And um, yeah, we'll just keep informing you guys with everything. And and yeah, thank you so much for joining us.